I just watched Dot and Bubble, and you know what? I liked it so much, I watched it twice. This is an episode, how is it that this show just keeps getting better? Every episode gets better. So, Dot and Bubble is a really interesting episode because it kind of has all of these twists and turns that I was not expecting. This is another kind of Doctor Light episode. Like, the Doctor is in it, Ruby is in it, but it's not really about them. Our central character is someone completely different, and we're following along with this character, Lindy, as the Doctor and Ruby are basically trying to help save her. But they can't be there with her directly, so they have to talk to her through her dot and bubble, which is the name of the episode. I kind of feel like I understand now why when Russell T. Davies said this was an episode they wanted to do since like Matt Smith, Doctor Who, but they weren't able to really do it. They didn't know how they would do it, why that was a thing. Because I feel like this is an episode that has a lot of technological stuff in it. It has like a lot of effects, which by the way, look really good in this episode. Like, wow. I just feel this season of Doctor Who in general, visually, is looking really, really crisp. I don't know if it's because of the getting more money from Disney, because Disney now has the distribution or what, but it's looking really good. The other thing that I feel might be part of it is the ending to this episode, which I was not expecting. It caught me completely off guard. And there's things that I liked about it and things that I didn't like about it. But overall, I liked it. But there are some things that I think we could nitpick that have been brought up to me that I kind of see and kind of agree with. So yeah, let's, let's get into sort of what this episode, why I liked it and sort of what was good about it. So first of all, the new main character that we have in this episode, for this one episode, Lindy, she is so fantastic. Like the acting across the board in this episode is just bananas. It is so good. Both her and um, who's the guy, what's his name, Robert? Ricky September. Ricky September. Also, what a name for a character. Ricky September. Ricky September as well is really amazing. And the doctor obviously is great. Ruby is great. So just every person that we kind of come into contact with in this episode, I thought did a really, really good job. And you know it's good because there's also a lot of shots that are like this. When you have shots that are like this, this is... The acting better be good, is all I'm gonna say. And it is up to snuff. There's a lot of quiet moments that we get with Lindy, and Lindy's an interesting character because she's really awful. Like, <laughs> really, really awful. She's one of those protagonists that you just wanna hate, but at the same time, she is so dropped into some really visceral human emotions that I think we just fall in love a little bit with her character, despite her being the worst. Really, it has to do with the actor doing a great job because she has very human moments that you can connect with the characters through. Like, you know, when monsters come after you and you're scared. The other thing that I think is really interesting about this episode is a lot of the themes that we're exploring. So it is talking about kind of like technology and what the world would be like if we were completely dependent on our tech to the point that people don't even remember how to walk properly because their tech tells them how to do everything which is obviously a very ridiculous concept. It is very Doctor Who. It's very like big, like that would, would that ever happen? I don't know. But at the same time, I live in a world where I see that dependency every day. I mean, I'm here talking to you on the internet right now. We are, we are heading towards that every day a little bit more. So I think it's interesting to see a world where we're kind of exploring that and how it can just completely brainwash people and how it affects people and what, what kind of people are born out of that style of living. This is also a very like weirdly futuristic, perfect, fine time is the place we're in. A weirdly perfect, but yet weirdly dystopian future where it seems like only the uber rich get to live like a good life. Like we don't really know actually what's happening to the middle class or the poor, but I feel the fact that they're not even in this at all, and also the ending of this episode, lends to where we're at with that, which probably is they're not doing so hot. 
So this is a world where everything seems perfect, but isn't because we've completely lost touch with reality and humanity. And that's just, I don't know, it's just a fascinating theme to explore. Find time in general too as a location is really cool, the way they built everything, the way these people talk in this future. Like it's a really cool world that they built, I think as well. The monsters are really weird and fun. <laughs> I love how every monster we've encountered too has been kind of something new at this point. We haven't really like seen any Daleks, we haven't seen any Cybermen, and I'm kind of here for that. Although I do feel like the doctor is like just stumped so many times. I just would like to see the doctor more in his power and just see him more sure of what's going on. I, you know, he does figure everything out though in the end. So that's, that's good. That's, that's what I need and that happened. And I do really like Shuti Gatwa as the doctor still. I think he's doing a really good job. But when we get to the end of this episode, we get another little twist. So there's a couple twists. The first one, I never said spoiler warning, but really spoiler warning, because I'm about to reveal some major two twists that I personally did not see coming, unlike the last episode, 73 Yards, which I thought had a twist I expected, but I still enjoyed that. This one, I was like, wait, what's happening now? And I really also like that. So Lindy ends up running into Ricky September, who is this singer, this performer that she idolizes. They say he's a singer, but we never actually hear him, I don't think, sing anything, which is interesting because the song that they sing doesn't sound like it's sung by him. So, but maybe in the future, singer means something different. I don't know. So she runs into him and he's actually a really heroic figure. He's actually a really weirdly stand-up guy who's also really well-read. So even though he's seemingly superficial and has a bunch of followers, he's helpful. And he seems like the perfect gentleman. And obviously Lindy's super into him. So she's like, this is kind of a dream come true, even though it's been a terrible day. They end up getting towards the escape, which the doctor and Ruby have helped them figure out where to go to get to safety. And it's at that moment when we realize that the people behind the beings behind this attack on fine time, the monsters that are there is actually their dots. So it's their AI, which has gained sentience and is now coming for them. The age old story. I don't know how I didn't see that coming, but here we are. And so as Lindy's about to be attacked, Ricky is steps in to try to protect her. And then she's like, you know, doing okay. She's trying to get the door open, get out of there. There's however, a moment where Ricky becomes incapacitated. He is not able to defend her. And rather than defend herself or, well, I guess this is a form of defending herself. She decides to turn the AI on Ricky by revealing that his last name begins with a C because the AI is hunting people alphabetically. That's so savage. Like I know she's the worst character, but I was like, maybe there's redemption for Lindy. Maybe this is, we're building to something where like, you know, it'll all be all right. This episode gives you a little bit of hope and then takes all of it and more away. So she turns the AI on Ricky. Ricky is brutally killed. And then she does escape and get to the doctor and Ruby and doesn't even reveal what happened. She's like, oh yeah, he just went back to save some people. And I was like, girl, really? You gonna be like that? Savage. So that's a crazy twist. But then at the end, they are about to go out into the wild woods beyond fine time, a place they're not supposed to go initially, but they have no choice. They've lost fine time. The AI's taken over. They gotta get away. So they're gonna go be pioneers. These people cannot be pioneers. These people can't even walk. So the doctor and Ruby are like, look, you guys go out there. It's not gonna be good. We got a TARDIS. Come with us. This TARDIS is a spaceship. Everyone could fit in it. Get on in this TARDIS. Come with us. We'll get you to a place where you can all be safe um, and it'll be good. We'll get you to a safer planet. And basically <laughs> these people say no because it turns out that yes, they are all exactly that level of terrible where they don't wanna go with the doctor. We don't really know exactly why, but the implication seems that he is not considered to be one of them in whatever way you want to interpret that. Now, one of the ways you can interpret that is it's a, it's a classist thing because he's not of fine time. They can't go with him because they don't associate with anyone that's not affiliated with fine time. Like it's a status thing, very likely. But also in the episode, I noticed that everyone was also white, I'm pretty sure. So it could also be a race thing. And especially because I feel like Lindy is kind of more chill with Ruby, but really doesn't seem to like the doctor. Like the doctor could say, the train, is that okay? Like the doctor could say anything 
and Lindy would be like, I don't like this. But for Ruby, she's more willing to listen, even if they're saying the same thing. So that's interesting. And the doctor has a bit of a breakdown. He gets very emotional, understandably, because if we know the doctor up to this point, we know that the one thing that the doctor just wants to do is help people, is save people. He's about preservation of all kinds. Even if you're a terrible person, he'll probably try to save you. So the fact that they won't even let him help them, he's like, you can say anything you want to me. You can do anything you want to me. I don't care. Just please let me help you. And they won't. And they all walk away. And he's like, they're going to die. Like, I know that's what's about to happen. And there's nothing I can do. A very visceral performance, I feel like, from Gatwa and from Millie uh, at the end of this episode that I loved. but. The one thing that I will say, although I loved this twist because I wasn't seeing it coming and it was, it hit me, it made me emotional, is that I feel like the doctor has been emotional now in like every single episode, has like cried in every single episode. And although all of the tears have felt justified, I'm just like, I just want a little bit of emotional variety. Like I would just like, can we just have an episode that's light and like where we don't cry for a minute? So I'm hoping the next episode will be that, but that's my only critique about it. It just makes it feel a little bit one note. That was kind of my critique with Boom. However, I did really like this episode. I think overall I would still give it a 10 out of 10 because man, it was a fun ride. And honestly, I think it's an episode I'm gonna come back to a lot, just visually. I couldn't even watch it with subtitles because it ruins the visuals, so good. So that's my thoughts on this one. Let me know what you thought of Dot and Bubble in the comments. I feel like it's going to be a very, I feel like it's going to be a very d split episode, but I haven't looked at any of the other reviews, so I could be wrong on this. I think some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. Let me know what side you fall on or, you know, if you are feeling that everyone is one way or the other. That's all from me, friends. I'll see you next time, probably in a different place. And until then, friends, stay nerdy and keep it timey-wimey.